So, uh, last but not least, let's go over to uh, NBC. Uh, NBC also the much maligned, but they're actually on the. You know, they're but on they the way were back. the number one. They were the number one watched network last season. They're they, on they the way back. That. Yeah, I mean, the and, Voice and the Blacklist. And they had the number one new show in the Blacklist. They, yes. they touted that one the too. Voice is I've a seen the Blacklist. Have I've heard you heard of that one? Good. It's yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Lizzie, that uh, explains Lizzie. a lot during Did the show. S- uh, so. <laughs> Uh, but they've got some stuff. So, they, they're, 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 so NBC actually has the most balanced slate because they need everything, right? So <laughs> oh, I'll take a little bit. Oh, they've got that. some comedies. I don't know. But this, they've got a Mary, something called Marry Me in the Comedies and Bad Judge and A to Z. And then they've got dramas. They've got something uh, called State of Affairs, which I know Joe is very excited about. And Mysteries of Laura, Constantine, <laughs> Aquarius, and Emerald City, which, which was a sort of a dark uh, a Wizard of Oz thing, which is now they just nixed that. So Emerald City's out. Didn't even make the cut. Well, it made, with me, the cut, they were developing, and it was coming up for as a mid-series replacement, and somewhere along production, they were like, nah, Wizard of Oz, we're out of here. So it may or may not <laughs> show up back. somewhere else, yeah. but, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, the, the, you know, the, the uh, dark drama about the about, uh, you Gotham is bad. How about the dark, <laughs> mean streets of the Emerald City? Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, NBC, no, NBC's no, no. like, maybe not, because well, they were successful with Grimm and, you know, and other things. So they thought, like, Well, maybe. you know, yeah. it is interesting because, yeah, NBC was successful well, Grimm and the whole Once Upon a Time. It seemed last right. season uh, the new fall shows they were they were trying to emulate that Once Upon a Time or Grimm vibe. Fantasy. With, yeah, with the fantasy. Dark fantasy. So that seemed to be NBC's uh, foray into doing it. But notice that we haven't even talked about any of that from the other networks. No, so they've all like, kind of no, everybody dropped it. They've well, kind of well, dropped it. And NBC finally, I think they realized, well, like, no one else is doing it. Maybe we should too. I'm like, oh, so, so yeah. what happens in season two? Well, then the Munchkins come out and I'm like, oh, geez. Right. yeah, <laughs> the, the, the Munchkin Revolt of 07. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so Rose up and threw gold bricks at everyone. Yeah. Uh, that's gone. The other mid-season place show they have is something called Aquarius, which does look interesting, which has uh, uh, David Duchovny yeah. uh, as a detective, sort of like around in the 60s doing, uh, you know, investigating and trying to infiltrate the the, the Manson murders, which is uh, pre, like, chasing, sort of chasing Charles Manson. Very dark, very David Fincher feeling. Um, it's a weird one because I think that they're very excited about the pilot and they're very excited about where this could go. But NBC is still kind of like, we kind of, we love it, but where do we, where do we put it? You know, so I think it's going to, it may come up, show up as a mid-season replacement in January, but that's something that is, uh, they have not cut that. They've left that. Hmm. Um, so that's not going anywhere. And to be clear, all the other networks have mid-season replacements, but this one was more notable for us to mention right now. Right. Yeah. We just hadn't brought up um, any of the other mid-seasons. But they do have some comedies, Joe. Uh, tell me about, tell me about what's, uh, this, this, uh, Marry Me and A to Z. Well, let's talk about Marry Me first. This is, this is to me, this is the one I'm looking forward to because this is Ken Marino and and Casey Wilson. Uh, Casey Wilson, you remember from uh, from Happy Endings, and she's love her. she's love. done tons love. and tons of stuff. Yeah. And same with Ken Marino. What I love about this cast is this Ken Marino oh, goes all the so way much. back to the state, and he's mm. you know you guys I don't know if you guys remember the state you know yeah. hey it's the po-. anyway the uh, the he has worked so hard for so many years, and this is this is uh, I I think these two if there's any if there's two actors in comedy that have truly earned a show. These two have done it. I, I love what they're doing. It looks hilarious. It looks really. It looks really centered. It looks really uh, grounded. Uh, basically, they've been together six years, and uh, they went on this last trip. And apparently, she, you know, the, the, the way the pilot's taking out, she thought that he was going to propose on this trip, and he didn't until the very end. In the meantime, she has lost her mind. So she faces away from him as he drops to a knee, and she tears him up. Tears up his mother, tears up his friends, tears him up, and he's on his knees the whole time. And it just—I love this. I love this idea. I love the the two actors in it. NBC has clearly put a lot behind it. They have uh, they have them hosting their uh, their fall preview. They're they're talking up all the other shows on the network. I think this is the one NBC thinks is going to be a home run. Casey Wilson's a star. I mean, she's great in uh, Happy Endings, which is sort of prematurely cut. She uh, is great in this new sort of uh, web series that's a, a spinoff of a, kind of a, a send up of the Housewives. I forget mm-hmm. what it's called. Uh, oh, she yeah. was on Saturday Night Live for a hot minute. She's funny. She reminds me of my friend, my good friend Arian Audible. Actually, this this case, this case. I, I I love her. She's so funny, and I'm rooting for her tremendously. Well, not just that. I mean, there's a bunch of really good names in this too. Yeah. Uh, anyone who's familiar with the LA comedy scene uh, might recognize some, or or even the Upright Citizen Brigade might recognize some of these names. Danielle Snyder, uh, John Gemberling, uh, Casey Williams does come. Uh, I'm sorry, Casey Wilson does come from UCB as well. Ken Marino is just fabulous in everything he does, and I just love him. Uh, you know. It's really interesting that you know abc and nbc seem to be the ones that are focused a little more on comedies 
uh, as far as new shows, and they seem to really like these romantic type comedies too. So uh, they're, they're, they definitely have some high hopes on this one. Uh, it's got an impressive cast, so I, I definitely think it's worth a watch. Okay, absolutely. Uh, what, what about what about um, the uh, let's go for A to Z. Z. A to Z. A to Z. Yes. What's that one, Joe? Uh, this is a, this is another. This is a romantic comedy, and I think the the the, the romance is a little bit heavier, obviously, than, than than what they're looking at with "Marry Me." This is uh, basically we're going to follow uh, the, this couple from the time they meet until and, and their entire relationship. That's kind of the idea here. The concept is we're going to follow Oof. everything. And uh, this is this is a comedy. It, 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 it looks it looks like it ought to be really sweet and All really right. funny. This is um, uh, Ben Feldman and uh, Kristen uh, Malati, okay. uh, and and uh, Ben Feldman from um, uh, American Pie movies, uh-huh. and Kristen Malati. She played in uh, she was in oh gosh darn it uh, How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. She ended up being the mother. Yeah, which, she was which on is Broadway because this feels a lot like How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> It, it, it's very similar. Yes, it's narrated by Katie Seagal, so it does have a very similar vibe. Oh, so there's a, there's a narrator. There's too. a narrator, so you're oh. going to be talked through all this. Oh, um, so which which I think the narrator device uh, I, I really do like because it it you it gives you an opportunity to get to know the people without uh, without sometimes having expository scenes that are just irritating. Is this a commercial for your profession? You just no. like this. Some this of the guy us who are voiceover actors feel for feel a living. Like I think that the, the narrators the narrators are under. underrated in comedy. I'm the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But well, here's here's my point about that. If you do set up an, an omniscient narrator that does have some part in the show eventually, what kind of, do, what kind of omniscient? Okay. Then I think what you wind up with is is you you can cut the expository scenes, which I do enjoy, and you can yeah. get some more depth into the characters. Sure. So I'm excited about this show. I think it's going to be good. It's yeah, right. executive producers Rashida Jones, Will McCormick, uh, and it's created mm-hmm. by Ben Queen. Well, good. I like well, I like Rashida Jones, and I like those folks, and there's some funny folks there. And I mean, but, just like, maybe, maybe, maybe wake me up when you get to like M. <laughs> and, like, I think M, it was M M N, and I, then you know. I thought this was a really cute. <laughs> this is a very different type of show than Marry Me. Marry Me, Marry Me, I think has a little bit more uh, slapstick comedy. It's yes. a little more, yeah, yes. a little more like that. This is just more the rom com. It has more of a uh, How I Met Your Mother feel to it. I think that one concern I might have is just with Christian uh, Milioti. Uh, just because uh, she's a great actress and she was so, you know, when she became the mother, when she was first announced as the mother, it was a big media frenzy about her. Who is this person? Who is this person? When people were trying to know who, uh, everything they could about her. And she ended up not having a major role in the final in the season. Yeah. Uh, and, and no spoilers here, but, you know, but still. Yeah. So I, I feel like in a way she's already been branded as the mother <laughs> you know, and I, I still look at her and I see it. There's a little bit of a Natasha Leggero look about her too, but mm-hmm. she but does. That's she does great, have yeah. a little bit about. At first, I thought it was Natasha Leggero, but when I realized it was her, I was like, oh, it's the mother. And and oh, I, I hope mother. and I hope I hope <laughs> that she can break out of that stereotype because she is a phenomenal actress. But I think it's just all that media frenzy, all that pre, you know, that spotlight put upon she her. She had when a she great was cast. turn in uh, Wolf of Wall Street too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh awesome. Yeah, she played okay. the first wife. She did a great yeah. job. Oh my god, yeah, she did. She's so much depth in that. That's a real good point. Yeah, she was. And she's a Broadway actress. She was. Yes. She was in Once, uh, the yeah. musical, yep. which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Which, which is, good I think this awesome. is going to be a good, good show. I think this All will right. be just fine. Stuff. All right, we'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, skeptical Nato- and nasty the terms you're looking for. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really bowled over by what's Raswell going on. Raswell is not right a fan now. of love. He's not I, a fan of love. I don't, Doesn't in, like love. NBC's guys. not really like not, not really uh, blowing so up my you, you, right uh, now. You want me to smile, do you? <laughs> smile and feel warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah tell, that's not happening. Tell me about Constant. We, we got a couple minutes left. Yeah, so yeah. Let's get. Let's tell them about Constantine and uh, State of Affairs. All right, Constantine. Constantine's going to be on Friday nights along with Grimm. It makes perfect sense. Constantine is based on the DC Comics Hell Blazer. Yes. And the lead character John Constantine. He's like a street magician and and it's pretty much it's, it's kind of procedural in the same mm-hmm. sense that Grimm is sure. uh, not not your typical CBS procedural but it, it definitely deals with the occult it, it, it definitely deals with uh, you know the uh, unnatural uh, happenstance uh-huh. and so he's a superna- supernatural that's a better word supernatural detective uh, so you know the lead Matt Ryan you may know him from Criminal Minds Suspect Behavior it's one quick season that it was around uh, another notable cast member is Harold Perrineau who people know from yeah. Lost uh, yeah, and you know, here's what's really appealing about this, and I think it's worth watching. Uh, one of the writers for the pilot was David S. Goyer, who wrote the uh, Dark Knight trilogy and a lot of great other stuff yeah. too. And then also the director for the um, director for the pilot was Neil Marshall, who uh, is known for a lot of his work on Game of Thrones. The pilot looks freaking fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I really, I'm a big I'm a big fan of the Keanu Reeves movie, which has mm-hmm. been underrated. That's also yeah. been, that's been oh, underrated. Oh, I love that movie. Recently. Yeah. And so I'm well, really, they, I'm really excited about this. The pilot looks great, but I'm wondering if it's sustainable. The movie the movie is actually uh, veers off from the comic book. So any comic book fans, this is 
going to stay a little more true. I think the one thing that's been a little bit of a controversy is the character in the comic book is bi, and they are oh. making him straight. So I think there was a little bit of a oh. controversy with the, the gay and lesbian community about that. But uh, other otherwise, it's going to be more or less pretty spot on from the comic book. Uh, by the way, Hellblazer, the character John Constantine originally came from Swap Thing. Swamp Things. Got it. So just FYI. Hot tidbit. And, State of, and then State of Affairs. State of Affairs, I feel, is NBC's way of getting to... Um, is their version of Scandal. That's and, the way, and, that's and the way I look at it. A little bit of Homeland. And a little, little bit of Homeland, scandal. a little bit of Scandal in there. So it's Catherine Heigl's return to TV after... Her tri- triumphant after, return. Her triumphant <laughs> return. After, after her graceful exit. After her <laughs> graceful exit from Grey's Anatomy. Uh, her, which her is, spectacular <laughs> movie career. And, and she, she did an okay movie career, but she's finally coming back to TV. Which movie was okay? I missed that one. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of me. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, so she plays CIA analyst Charleston Tucker, and she is. she is working in the White House uh, <laughs> for the President of the United States. Who Where is she be? Who? <laughs> Sorry. We're, okay, uh, let's, let's come on. Uh, who is Alfre Woodard? Alfre Woodard plays the president of the U.S. Uh, of she is the first female black president. And, uh, yeah, she. so absolutely. So I think... Uh, it's their version of scandal. So there it is. So there's that's the best way to put it. NBC's trying to compete with with that. Kind of like CBS is adding to their good wife arsenal with Madam Secretary. And this is NBC's way of L- trying to. A lot of female leads. A lot, lot this is of what, female we're, leads. We're seeing a trend with a lot of female leads coming Absolutely. through. So that's right, that. ladies. Just, and, uh, and that premieres November 17th. So we've got a while for that one. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, Julia, tell us about Bad Judge and Mysteries of Laura. Love I have all Bad the redheads. Judge. Yeah, you're the, red- <laughs> the redheads. All of them. Okay, uh, so starting with the Mysteries of Laura, which uh, premieres September 24th on NBC, which is Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a little confused on this one. I'm going to be honest. From what I'm gathering from the trailer, she's this hard-nosed, brilliant detective on the mean streets. We have a bad judge, so so you're talking about Mr. Laura's. Yeah, I can do the other one first. Bad bad judge. Bad judge. Kate Walsh, the other redhead. Yes. Sorry about that. Who Joe loves. I loves. You loves. I love. You know, this I idea. love her too, and so I really have high hopes for this show. I, the trailer did not hook me as much as I hoped, although it had some really funny moments. So the the premise of this is that you have this wild child, partier, maybe a little bit past her prime, plays in a rock band. Um, just you know, kind of a hot mess, um, but has a good time, and that that's what she does by night. But by day, she is a hard ruling judge. Get out. It's true. <laughs> It's so, so true. Perhaps a little bit, uh, repu- she has a reputation of being a little bit unorthodox. No, oh, okay. From her post behind the bench. She dispenses her own brand of justice. She most <laughs> certainly does. You know, <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I don't like your tone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, what? I'll tell you what I think. I, I think this looks great. This looks like a lot of fun. Mm. It's not, I don't think it's supposed. We're not. We're not you know, trying we to save saw, the world here. It's fun. It's it's kind of like comedy bad. really, really well. She's really funny. You know the thing with her too is, uh, you know, people know her first and foremost from Grey's Anatomy and then Private Practice. So she plays then, the drama really well. But she actually loves comedy. She is always out in uh, the improv theaters here in L.A. She's, she's been on a couple of UCB. Yeah, she's great mm-hmm. in Fargo. So she actually has a lot of comedy to it. And and this show kind of is. Bad teacher meets night court. Bad teacher, bad Santa. Love it. Yeah, bad so judge. that's the way I look it's like at franchise. it. Boom. Yeah. I miss and, night court. And it's an adolescent fantasy, let's right. be honest. But there's I will nothing, say, <laughs> it's true. nothing hotter than the idea of there's nothing under the judge's outfit and she's going to be mean and punish me. That's right. some wonderful stuff. I will stuff. say this comes from executive producers Will Farrell. Okay. And Adam McKay mm-hmm. and um, showrunner Lynn, uh, Liz Brixius, who is also the showrunner of Nurse Jackie. And she does okay. really, I, I love Nurse Jackie. So she does good work with strong female characters. Man, I'm all for the strong with female characters. Contrasting and, and, and personalities. The female as long as they don't involve love. Um, shut up. Or making uh, him smile. Yeah, yeah. So that thing. premieres uh, October 2nd, NBC, Thursdays at 9. And last but not least. And last but not least, my other redhead, Deborah Messing, mm. whom I really adore. But then there's this show. So, okay, like I was saying before, um, so she's like this brilliant detective, Mean Streets, New York, and she just can't seem to keep it together at home is what it's looking like. She has this soon-to-be cop ex-husband. She has these unruly, crazy, rambunctious twins. She has these, these, like, Lucy-esque moments when she's she's in the home. So I'm a little confused if it's a cop drama Mm -hmm. or if it's a family drama, but is it a comedy I'm not quite they're, they're, sure. It's a hybrid. It's all the above. Is that a thing? It's, well, it's, it's what they're doing. And Deborah Does that Messing, work? They just uh, want to give Deborah Messing her triumphant return to NBC. You know, she has she's created one of the, one of the great 
TV characters of all time in, in, in Grace. What's Grace's yeah. last name? Adler. Grace Adler. And now she's back as a tough-talking cop. <laughs> Is she? Uh, you know, I don't know. I want her to be so badly. I am her number, uh, number one fan. And I really think yeah. if anyone can pull this off and pull it together, it will be her. But I'm just sensing a, uh, a disconnect. Okay, so just will. okay. Now, so now that we just let's just get out of here. Before we get out of here, we have uh, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC. Who wins, Joe? Who has the best shows? So Fox far? looks like they're running you out. Like I think they're running out the best docket. Okay, go mm-hmm. ahead, Julia. Uh, I am going to pick up. Wait, I'm looking at my list. I'm gonna. Oh God, CBS or Fox? Take your time. I'm going to go with Fox. <laughs> okay. Shut up. <laughs> what do you got, Nando? I think for me, uh, more of the shows that I want to watch are on Fox, but you just cannot go wrong with CBS. And, and like I said, they always seem to do really well. Yeah. You know? And Adam they just Secretary, know where to make man, it work. Man, that looks so good. Yeah. I got, I got to go with CBS, although I'm really, really excited. I'm really happy with ABC. With, to do, I'm kind of get away with Murder and Blackish or really sort of uh, uh, some standouts, but I'm really excited about what Fox is doing as well. Yeah. So, CBS, I'm sorry. So uh, that's it. Thanks for joining us for uh, this this fall season preview of the networks we'll be back and do run through the cable fall tv preview stuff as well uh joe flippo where can we find you sir uh, you can find me on the twitters at joe flippo j-o-e-f-l-i-p-o and my website is joseph and oh. instagram you're there hello so oh funny. yeah but i don't know how to use it did i tell you the instagram story <laughs> yeah yes. but after you. yeah very bad <laughs> joe's on instagram too folks <laughs> And uh, and Julia, where can find you? Uh, Twitter and Instagram at my name, Julia Carely, J U L I A C E A R L E Y. Okay, Nando? and you can find me at Nandovel, N A N D O V E L, uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. And I'm Joe Braswell. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Joe K Braswell. Uh, thank you, Marissa Serafini. Thanks for joining us back, and we'll be back uh, very soon with some cable shows. Uh, thanks for joining us for our special episode. We'll see you later. Woo. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 